Hello and welcome to another video tutorial with Jess. Um, today we will be looking into another requested tutorial and this one will be Vulcans. Now, during the course of this video I will probably say the name of the species very butchered. That is because in German the V is spoken differently depending on the word. So if you hear Vulcan or Vulcan, that can be very different <laughs> differ in this video because I don't always watch the proper pronunciation. So just forgive me for that. Um, and I will show you how to make this nice young lad here into a Vulcan. Um, for that we need to do basically two things. The first is check on the eyebrows because we know Vulcans have those eyebrows that go a little bit slanted upwards and the ears that have to be pointed. The process is quite different depending on what kind of picture you have, if it is close to the eyes or if it is covered by hair or stuff like that. Um, this one is an easy one. I might have another one to make it a bit more hard. <laughs> it depends on how much time we have. So we don't do anything at this one here but the eyebrows and the ears. So first we unlock this. Um, this is the way I do it. There are ways to do it all over the place from painting your own eyebrows, painting the ears or using brushes or whatever. Um, as we know from our Andorian part in the hair color tutorial, I often use brushes, but in this case I don't. I don't use any parts from any other pictures, only the stuff that we have here already. And I will show you what we do. Now, the one eyebrow here I will leave as it is. It's okay, because it looks already a little bit slanted. But the other eyebrow here is too straight and horizontal, so I'm going to go around here and I'm not going to cut it out because that would be destructive and I don't like destructive. I copy it with Control C and put it back in with Control V. Oops, that is a second one. <laughs> so we have an eyebrow on an extra layer. But I'm going to do this either I am using transform and for example skew or perspective or distort. I use usually tra tra free transformation, hold down control and you move, move it the way I like it. Maybe a little bit more like this, but I also use a tool that is in Photoshop. I don't know in which version of Photoshop it first appeared, but I use it quite often, that's called Puppet Warp. That allows you to move stuff really nicely, and I used it before on uniforms. So I just make an anchor here, that means it's rotating around this, make one at the end of the eyebrow and move it so how I would like it. Put one in the middle and straighten it out in case it's too bendy. That is much better. Now of course we have an eyebrow down here and we see the ugly lines here, but we will work on that. First we remove ugly lines. We make a mask layer and then we grab a soft brush and mask the edges out here. That will make it nicely blended, especially after we remove the <laughs> second eyebrow, because right now it looks like a butterfly in his eyes. Um, then we go onto the original layer and make a new layer above that. I know there are shortcuts for doing all this stuff, but this is the way I do it. I might be lazy, but I can't remember all the shortcuts. Um, and we use the stamp tool. That is how I usually cover uh, stop, cover stuff up. I should not talk so fast. We go here to the stamp tool and use a nice 
size. Don't worry about stamping over your eye because it is an extra layer. You will be able to erase it later. That's a nice brush that works. Then we go on current and blow. That means that you can sample stuff from the face and put it on the layer at top. If you use all layers, it will also sample the one above, so we don't want that. If you use only a current layer, then it can't sample anything because this layer here is empty. Makes sense, right? So we go on current and below. Then we sample a bit of skin. I use one that is a bit close here, so we make sure to have the proper coloring. And then a bit from above here. If you notice that this color doesn't work well here, just use a different one. And go all over this until the former eyebrow is gone. Now we see we went a little bit over the eye here. So a new mask layer and free the eye. Make sure that you don't free too much because then you see the eyebrow again. So we have this. Then we see that there's an ugly edge here that we didn't take care of. So we mask on the new eyebrow layer a bit more. There, that's fine. And with that, the young man has a nice Vulcan eyebrow. Now onto the ear. Um, the ear I handle depending on if there's hair in the way or not. There is not much hair in the way, but um, I will show you the way anyway. Um, let me first make a backup copy of that. Mask layer and fill with black so this layer is not visible as you can see. And then I am going to choose this ear here and fill that with white. I am doing that so that we have a layer with only the ear. And I am going to quickly mask out some stuff here, a bit here. Since you already have part of this ear here on the layer below, it's not that important to be careful. Um, but you need the intact top here. Because that is the part we are going to point up. Okay, just take it like that. I'm going to apply the mask layer, uh, layer mask. So we have this ear here, and now can use Liquify. Liquify is a great tool which allows you to move around parts. It's a bit like smudge, but easier and better, at least for me. Um, let's go. Okay, we need to pointify this part here and do not want to have much stretch of everything down here so I'm going to mask this. Here's a freeze mask too and here's the brush size. Now the size actually is okay. When you go with the freeze mask tool over parts these parts of the object are not going to be changed. That is great when you have, for example, a background you don't want to have moved and pushed around and have strange little curves in it. You just mask it out with this tool and you can be sure that it's not touched. So let's go closer. Um, now with this brush we are going to point defy the ear, making this a bit smaller. And I'm starting to click and pull, click and pull, just like 
magic here, right here working with clay. As you see, I have a little bit of lag. That is not you, that is on my computer. Um, making this a little bit nicer here. Moving this a little bit in. Now, pointed ears of Vulcans are, like many other things, pretty unique. That means some Vulcans have pretty straight tips here, others have nice curves in it. Um, it depends on your preference, really. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you move this inner part with the outer tip, because it looks just weird when the... How is it called, that part of the... Well, the top of the part, where if there is lots of flesh in it, and it just doesn't look right. Um, adding here a little bit of curve. So, just take this. There we have a pointy ear. It's not a big pointy ear, and usually oh, I'm pretty sure the Balkans have a bit of pointy ears. Let's go in for another moment with a bigger brush and make it a big pointy ear. Add a really nice curve here. We don't want it to look like an ear of a rabbit or something. So we are doing this. And as you can see, there we go. This is now a bit harsh here. So first I'm going to do is take the blur brush with this little tear here. Make this a little bit smaller and just go a little bit around this edge on the inside so it is not that harsh. That is better. It's not very pretty because I didn't put much time into it. I'm just going to show you how it works. Then of course you still see this ear checking in from behind and you see an ugly wave here, but I'm not going to fix it now. Um, what I'm doing is I add a new layer between the new ear and the old ear. In this case, because it's a unicolor background, I'm going to take a brush, sample the background, and et voila, just paint over the old ear. And I'm going to let me see if it works if I just slightly blur it a bit. Yes, and then I'm going to slightly add a noise over it. It's like really, really a little. I am doing that to make the stretched out ear fit better to the rest of the picture. Because through the pulling we have smoothed out the skin texture of course. Now this is a start. It's not perfect but that's one way to do it. Another way would be to take parts from pictures from Vulcans and add them to your picture but then you have to adjust the color and make sure that everything fits. So this is how I'm doing Vulcans and I hope this helped you and you will have a lot of fun with your own. Maybe you want to share how you do it so feel free and until next time stay creative.